Okay, so if you've been following my clean architecture work, you'll know that we achieved clean architecture by the book in Next.js, but we had a problem deploying everything on Vercel's Edge runtime, which also prevented us from using the middleware functionality in Next.js. I actually took the time and refactored the uh, Next.js clean architecture project that I have on GitHub and actually achieved running it on Vercel's Edge runtime. So. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you what I did and what you can do as well if uh, you implemented clean architecture in your project uh, in order to run on serverless uh, edge runtime. All right, let's dive in. This is the PR. Uh, it's still not merged. We're actually going to merge it together at the end of this video. But uh, there were two things preventing us from uh, actually deploying on on Edge. That was Inversify, which we used for dependency injection, and also the Argon2 library, which we used to hash passwords and to uh, check if the password is uh, equal to the hash when logging in. So I refactored the project to replace both of these libraries. And let's actually start with Argon2 because it's simpler. I'm not using Argon2 anymore. I just use Bcrypt TS, which is fine. It works well on the Edge runtime. And this is how it looks like. For example, if we go to source, application, use cases, authentication, and then let's go into the sign in use case. At the top, we'll see that we import compare uh, from Bcrypt. Uh, it used to be verify or validate from Argon2. And we simply use it like so. Compare, here's the password that we get from the uh, input, and then also pass the hashed passwords of the existing user. And this is how we validate whether the password is um, correct or not. And also in the sign up use case, we import hash from Bcrypt TS. It used to be hash from Argon2, literally the same, same name. And here's how it looks like. We take the password that we want to hash, we pass it to the hash function, but, and then we also pass a password salt rounds, which it just equals to 10. Don't ask what this is, I don't know. Um, uh, it was just according to the documentation, but it works, it works well, it works well. Okay, so that's Bcrypt, and now let's get into the bigger uh, refactoring, which is uh, refactoring Inversify and replacing Inversify with I Octopus. I did spend some time to try to see the typed inject package. Uh, this is a DI library that allows you to just basically run it on the edge runtime. It doesn't use the reflection API, just like Inversify does. And that is the thing that was preventing us from using dependency injection like Inversify on the Edge runtime or any other runtime except for Node. So typed inject does not use it and technically it can work. I didn't like it personally because I found the API to be a little weird. For example, here's how you create an injector or a container. Uh, you provide a value or factory or class like so, and you cannot really break this chaining action that's going on here. You can't just say, okay, this is enough until this point, and I want to get the injector and pass it to a different file where the you know we can inject additional stuff like modules, for example. You can't do that. That was a little weird. Uh, and then also injection uh, is a bit weird. For example, here's how... And this is just a personal opinion, so... Uh, some of you might like this, just use, uh, you can use typed inject. Uh, but yeah, here's how we can provide a value, uh, foo to the value of 42. And when we actually register the factory, we take that number, but it's, this is just a number. And in order to connect the injection, we need to say dot inject on the bar factory on the function itself and pass in foo as const. Basically, this is the first argument and it is registered under the full name in the string. And that's how we actually register it here. I don't know. I, I found it a bit weird. Uh, and it, I, needed to, I needed to step away from the current uh, Inversify implementation. So that's why I didn't went with uh, typed inject. I actually went with um, iOctopus uh, because it is, its API is really close to Inversify. 
And once you see the differences in the inverse CFI versus iOctopus, you'll see that we actually don't change a lot of the things. We only change how we inject things. Um, everything else stays the same. So that's why I picked iOctopus. And also because it's built by one of my community members, uh, EviWeb or EviWeb. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. EviWeb actually published this while we were talking about clean architecture and dependency injection containers, etc., etc. So, yeah, this is this is really a really really cool package. Okay, so uh, let's get in. I'm gonna go and first show you the container. Okay, so at the top we have create container. We don't have the uh, other imports from Inversify. We just have create container. We create that container and then we just pass it to these register module functions that basically take the container and append um, a bunch of injections to it, right? The get injection uh, method stays literally the same. So we're not even changing this. And therefore, we don't need to change anything in how we use the get injection. But let's get into the modules now. For example, let's get into the monitoring module. So. This module registers the instrumentation service and the crash reporter service. Uh, we don't have modules in iOctopus. We just have the container and we can bind stuff to it, right? We have the opportunity to branch on the node environment, just like we did previously. And in this case, we want to register either mock uh, implementation of the services or the actual real implementation. So this is how we... Uh, bind the instrumentation service to this symbol. And symbols, by the way, they're exactly the same. Nothing changed since um, we implemented this in Inversify. This is how we register or bind the uh, services and repositories. And this is one example. Let me show you the authentication module because this is a bit more complex. Okay, so again, same thing, but in this case, the authentication service actually depends on the user's repository and the instrumentation service, right? If we go into the uh, authentication service, we can see that we do inject these two uh, into the constructor. And in order to inject these, previously when we were using Inversify, actually, let me show you the difference, because you'll see the difference much better. When we were using Inversify, we needed to use the, just go find that authentication service. There we go. We needed to use the at injectable decorator, right? Which came from Inversify. But look at the new version. We don't have any of those things. We don't have any injectables. We don't have any at inject. We're not even using symbols or anything related to DI. Right now, with this new implementation with iOctopus, the authentication service has zero knowledge that there's a dependency injection going on or an inversion of control libraries being used, etc. So the authentication service does not care about those things, right? It doesn't pull their APIs, it doesn't pull their functions. It's just an authentication service. It just implements its functionality and that's it. So that's another thing I like about iOctopus uh, is that because it really cleaned up the code, right? And the and this is how we actually register them. Let me actually open uh, the authentication service here. As we can see, we have the user's repository as the first argument, and we also pass it here as the first argument in the uh, array. Within this is the dependency array, and the second one is the instrumentation service. So instrumentation service. And that's how we can register services or repositories or just basically classes that utilize constructor injection through the dependency array that matches the order and the type of the arguments that are in the constructor. And if we go further down, we're going to see the use case registration. And if you remember, we did not use dependency injection for the use cases. Those were plain functions. I decided to put them in the container as well, along with the controllers. So it's not just the use cases. We also um, have the controllers registered. Why? Because the controller is the touch point, right? The controller will invoke 
uh, either a service or a use case, and the use case will invoke either a service or a repository. In order not to use the get injection functionality on every level and potentially break the dependency rule, I needed to also register the use cases as controllers and only use the get injection to get an instance of the controller, but the library iOctopus will handle the rest of the uh, injections, like the use cases, services, repositories, etc. Okay, so check this out. We have the sign in use case right here, right? And if I go back and open the sign in use case, first we can see that it's not wrapped with an if else because we don't we don't have a mocked version, we don't have a different version of the use case, it's, that is the use case, right? That is the function. But in this case, we are binding it as a higher order function because we need to pass dependencies through the array in the second argument, as you can see. So here on the right, I have the sign in use case and this used to be just this function right here. What I needed to do in order to avoid any type of uh, dependency, direct dependency injection usage within the use cases and services, etc., is to wrap the function, the one that we had, in a higher order function that accepts the dependencies through arguments and then it returns the original function right here. So that we don't actually need the get injection here. We already have the instrumentation service. We can literally just use it, right? And again, just like the uh, class, we need to match the order of the arguments. If you don't like this, um, you can actually use an object. I started with arrays and I think classes, to class does not support. Yeah, it's always a dependency array, but the, the uh, to higher order function can be a dependency object. Basically, instead of an array, you can say, uh, instrumentation service, colon, and then the symbol that defines or identifies the uh, instrumentation service. Right, so here's the use case, the sign-in use case, and then further down we also have the sign-in controller, right? Again, same thing, let me just open it on the right so we can see what's going on. Sign-in controller wrapped with a higher order function that returns the original sign-in controller function, but this one has the instrumentation service as the first argument and also the sign in use case as the second, the one with that we just saw. Okay, so here it is on the left. Uh, in the dependency array, we have the instrumentation service as the first argument and the sign in use case as the second argument, right? So again, we don't really need to use the get injection within controllers or within use cases or anywhere except the web part. And here's what I mean. For example, if we go to, let's say, authentication actions, these are the server actions, right? And we know that this in clean architecture belongs in the frameworks and drivers layer or AKA the web layer, right? And here's that get injection. Here's the instrumentation service, and we just use it here. And there's also the signup controller. So we can get the registered signup controller, whatever it is, and we'll just invoke it. Right. And inside the uh, sign up controller, we don't, let me just open this uh, sign up controller. There we go. We already have the instrumentation service and the sign up use case. We don't actually use the get injection method here. We only use it in server actions or in pages or um, API handlers or in the middleware because we also have a middleware now. There we go, there's our middleware and it's working perfectly. We'll try to get the session ID, we'll just get the authentication service using the get injection, and then we'll just validate the session. That's it. If the validate session uh, method uh, throws an error, then we'll just uh, redirect to the sign in page and that's it, right? Okay, so here's our middleware. So in order to enforce this, in order to prevent the uh, get injection or anything DEI related from being used within the source, I actually used the ESLint package called Boundaries, the ESLint plugin called Boundaries, but I'm not going to get into this. Uh, it's a really cool package. I'm going to create a different video uh, for this. Basically, this will prevent us from using the DEI package. Let me see. 
you know, from the DI package within the use cases, for example. There we go. DI is not registered. So if I go to a sign in use case and if I try to pull in the get injection method from DI container, Look at the error. No rule allowing this dependency was found. File is of type use case, dependency of type DI. This means, no, I'm not gonna allow you to uh, pull in get injection in this file, which is a use case because it's not allowed, okay? So I only allow DI into the app folder and also the middleware but not within the source directory. And in order to achieve that, I also needed to register, let me go back to the container, I also needed to uh, register the controllers and use cases inside of the dependency container. But yeah, those were the, the two things that I needed to do in order to run um, clean architecture with dependency injection on Vercel and yeah, so far it's um, it's just working great. Uh, that's the refactoring. Uh, feel free to look through the PR, see in better detail what I did. But because this is ready, let's just go ahead and merge this to the main branch. Okay. And there we go. And I'm just going to delete this branch to keep everything tidy. And now it's official. We are supporting uh, the Vercel Edge runtime. All right. So thanks for watching. And I'm going to see you in the next one. Take care.